Alright guys, welcome back to Valorant News. The last chance qualifier for the VCT challenges is almost over. 11 of the 12 teams competing in challenges this season have now been confirmed. One more to be determined today. Lots of talk on that, but also Marv talking about the fact that he turned down at least two franchise offers in the offseason and saying that Sinatra is one of the best players that he's really had the pleasure to play with and what his chances are of returning to competition in the near future. Very much enjoy your thoughts in the comments below. Hit the like button if you enjoy. Subscribe if you are new as always. I would greatly appreciate I thought this is pretty funny actually from the Cloud9 guys on Lotus which people are getting some practice in now ahead of the new season because it doesn't start too long from today at least the Sao Paulo event on I think the 14th of February but also the challenger stuff begins in terms of the, well all the 12 teams they're in challengers right at the start of February with one final team still to be confirmed. Yesterday though Squirtle Squad versus OR Esports was the final LCQ match we thought maybe a team like the Nation could be in here or there were some other teams but these guys obviously been grinding hard getting to this spot and it was a 2-0 in the end for Squirtle Squad. And uh, as Wedded says, of course, because he took a big risk leaving the team he was on before after practicing with them for eight or nine months. But um, they got the job done. The last chance qualifier. This is the last chance for at least teams to qualify through. And I always like to see when teams that haven't been signed because, like, Squirtle Squad is not exactly a... Um, it's not an organizational name. They just came up with that for a good laugh. But um, it's always kind of nice when you see organizations or players or teams that weren't signed to an organization qualify and look. Like, they had some coaches as well. Great roster they managed to form here to, to make it through. And I think they were kind of the comfortably better team over the course of this series. A governor at a harmful. Okanos and Wedded qualify squad till squad make it through. So we'll also see which organization will come and sign these guys. Because I thought this is maybe the route that potentially either Disguise Toast would take or other organizations would take. They would kind of say, okay, look, let's wait to see who qualifies and then sign those guys. But sometimes the teams that qualify already signed. That puts you in a bit of a tough spot. And obviously DSG did exactly the right thing from start to finish. Bill a fantastic roster but um yeah we'll see which organization if any well someone's got to pick up Squirtle squad but as i say there's about a week or so only until the official challenger stuff manages to begin so i'll just share where Tarek was kind of watching this and watching the final rounds where these guys got their spot confirmed i'm guessing vns is going to play lineups with this brimo yeah I mean, if, if, if they brimo this round either team spot, it's a troll actually a troll I mean, I feel like VNS is the win factor. Like, he should wait, right? He's, he's gonna wait. If things get bad, he's got it. Yeah. Oh, and wow. things are getting bad. Whoa. And things are getting bad. Wait, the defense ult. Wait, he used both. You gotta use ult now. You're down. Yeah, he's. Oh, he got naded. He's gonna throw the Molly. Where's the Molly at? Oh, no, he's throwing his lineup. He's throwing his lineup. He did his lineup. You did it? Okay. I'm pretty sure. It looked like it. I hope he did it. No, he didn't wait, do wait, it. No lineup. No lineup. No lineup. No lineup. What? what? Whoa, whoa. He has no lineup. Why was he in the whole time? What a throw. Whoa. I... No, I, I was watching him on the mini map, but I didn't see him throw it. God. There's no time no, I for just, it. I just, I just saw uh, him in T spawn. Yo. Wait, I saw him in T spawn. I'm like, why is he just. Sitting there. You know. So 2-0 versus uh, ORR Esports, as you guys can see right here. And it was a pretty crazy series. Pearl went 13-11 in their favor after some big comebacks on the defensive side. And then Fracture was super back and forth, had a great offense, and managed to just about hold on in the end 13-10. to So good result for those guys. They managed to qualify through. And this is what the bracket officially looks like now. So if we scroll up here, we've got squads or squad qualifying. One more team will make it. That's not going to be the nation. They got taken down by Sonics. They then took down nearest airport a couple of days ago. They'll play ORR Esports tonight night to determine the final team that qualifies so exciting stuff and they will join all of these teams so these are the teams that got the official kind of uh, confirmation mat phase tsm show over really and face it haven't confirmed their roster but it's coming soon and uh, g2 in the card of course those six teams got the automatic invitation then four teams qualified last weekend through the normal qualifier breakthrough disguise toast team of course oxygen and dark ratio now squirtle squad is the 11th and then the 12th will be determined between those two teams today and then on february the first that's when split one begins and the first matches happen so it's not too far from today get about two weeks of good challenges action and matches before we even get to Sao Paulo where the tier one teams are going to start to come into play the other thing to mention here is that during this qualifying stage there were many teams that we thought might have been competing that were maybe intending to compete I think Shroud even mentioned the other day on stream that he kind of wanted to play with Timmy and Tarek and everything but for various reasons it just couldn't work out and it didn't really make sense for them to do it anymore because after Shroud's run 
happened last season on Sentinels. And of course, there's been a fair bit of drama from even you know Shazam versus uh, Sentinels on that topic over the last couple of weeks or so. But um, you know, during that whole discussion, we were thinking, okay, Shroud's going to come back. I think he even mentioned at the Champions event or something that he wanted to form a team, either his own team or something, and it never really worked. The only team that we saw the kind of clout team take it seriously was Stewie 2K's team that almost made it work, but didn't quite make it work in the ends. And that was the question as well about Sinatra's team. We thought for a time they were never even going to be a thing. I think some of the issues that Tarek kind of came into is the fact that because he plays or because he's on Sentinels and Timmy's on 100 Thieves, you get some sort of political issues with this. Now, at the same time, Zom's managed to make it work. And, um, you know, but despite being on Sentinels, I think Shanks couldn't play with those guys because he was on Phase. So there was some trickery there just because if you're technically signed as a substitute or something, or if you're part of the organization in a certain way, you're part of an organization in tier one. It becomes a bit tricky because if you qualify for tier two, then, you know, questions are getting raised if you win Ascension and all this. But I feel like that wasn't a problem that was so far down the line. It shouldn't really have affected these discussions. But in the end, we did get one Clouts team that, well, actually was a pure Clout team just doing it for content. That, of course, the Untamable Beast, Sinatra and co. As he says here, tough loss for the fans. O2 versus these guys will be back stronger. Untamable Beasts fighting with the Skull Emoji because, of course, you know, his return to competitive lasted not particularly long. So what is that going to happen in the future here? Because Marv came out on stream after this and kind of said, yeah, it was um, kind of playing in those matches, reminded him, not reminded him at all, but reminded him how good Optic was compared to those matches they played, like um, the way they were as a team, the way they were so good by, you know, communication and understanding where if they make mistakes, they're going to own up to them, but also discuss with the team how they can improve and get better. Things that are kind of rare in teams, it seems in general, and kind of discussing that. But also says Sinatra is one of the players that you can rely on to do similar things. And obviously individually, okay, Zoms was great in the qualifiers, but so was Marv, so was Sinatra, of course, as expected. And Sinatra certainly had his moments over the course of the last chance qualifier, despite going out, of course, without qualifying in the end. So is there a potential return in the future here for Sinatra? We saw that it was about April last year where Sinatra confirmed his willingness to return to competitive. He now, you know, had the chance here, but they never took it that seriously, right? And like, it would have taken a serious effort for them to actually try and make it. Zoms reckons they could have done. We saw that yesterday where the Zoms was like, yeah, if we tried, we probably could have qualified. And uh, maybe Sinatra feels the same way. Maybe he doesn't. But it's unclear what other opportunity might present itself. But I don't really care that much. And, you know, I see Twitter saying, yo, Marv went from playing with Ye and the best team in the world to playing with us. Bro, like, what? Literally just playing for fun. That's actually brain. Twitter is controlling. I read that, but I just laugh. My best of boys, yeah. Uh, like I just realized why we were so good because we we're just all on the same page. And when we give each other criticism, we all agree and we all talk about it. Like when FNS or Crashies or Chat says, "Yo, you should have done this," I'm like, "Okay, I did this because of this." And we talk about it. I'm like, "Okay, yeah, I understand." I'm like, yeah, I feel you. That's why we were so good. Lose, lose, play in the tournament for fun. Nah, I don't really care what people say. That's at the end of the day. If you know, you know. You don't understand. Like the way I play and the way I think on optic, bro. Everyone thought the same way. Literally, like there's five, five of us that just knew exactly what. Sinatra is one of those players that can also do that. So Sinatra was fun to play with. He's good. And Jay's trying. He's good. Very good. But the optic roster is unbelievable. On Optic, we 13-3 every team. You talking about any teams? No, not really. the best. I don't think teams are talking to anybody right now because they already have their five set for the tournament. So why would they, why would they be talking to players? I like how they give me assists on Sky now. They used to never give assists. Turn down franchise teams during transfer period? What transfer period? You mean transfer period? Yes, of course. Turn down a couple. That is the other key piece of information here that's got to be considered is that just because, look, Marv turned down offers from franchise teams doesn't mean he's not going to get another offer from a franchise team despite the fact that he failed to qualify through the last chance qualifier for challenges. Like, obviously, pro teams know how good Marv is. Obviously, those guys, Chet and, um, you know, even Victor and Crashes, the people he mentions, they will still rate him highly as a teammate. I wouldn't be surprised at all if NRG start to struggle a little bit at the start of the season. They say, hey, Marv, like, when are you coming back? You know, like, come back as soon as possible. We want to bring 
bring you back in, reform well, more part of that optic core. Marv will get some more opportunities in the future, whether he wants to take them up or not. Will Sinatra, though, that was the thing. There was the question whether Sinatra would get a chance to return with Sentinels. That's not been happening. I think 100 Thieves has said as well that, like, um, you know, Sinatra might be a great player, but they're not going to go near him for, you know, reasons of reputation in this, which is understandable. I feel like at some organization, at some point, some organization might just bite the bullet and give it a go. But it also seems doubtful that our organization would be a tier one organization because the risk you run if you pick up Sinatra is that, you know, Riot aren't going to be happy with you. Therefore, all of a sudden, your partnership situation goes down the drain. Now, who knows, right? Because technically, Riot have allowed him to compete and he's, you know, free to compete by the rules that they've come out with. Of course, he even confirmed it was April last year that, um, you know, at this time, he was able to compete again. Um, he's ready to return to competitive and will start tryouts this week. I mean, this tweet had 110,000 likes. Turned out, right, that he hadn't done this training. He then did the training. And then after that, I think he was okay to technically compete from the Riot side. Still a risk, though, for organizations to go for this if they wanted to, because there would be a lot of backlash as a result of it. My my guess is really that maybe some tier two teams would be interested, right? Because if you're a tier two team in challenges and you're kind of like a middle of the pack team, but you think, you know what? Like, um, you know, screw it. We're not going to win Ascension potentially with our current team. We might as well try and get Sinatra and see if we can offer him some money to play for us. And if he wants to, maybe he can. So it depends what Sinatra wants to do, whether he just wants to go content full time now, but he seemed quite committed last year to be returning. And now at least he has played in the last chance qualifier, even without the full intention to win. So, you know, maybe an opportunity will arise in the near future, or maybe it will not. Very much enjoyed your thoughts on all this stuff in the comment section below. Hit the like button if you enjoyed. Subscribe if you're new. Take care, and I'll see you next time.